Hello and welcome to the Good Imaginations podcast. Tonight, we will journey to the crow's nest of a ship, where you can unwind, reorient yourself, and if you would like, fall fast asleep. Before we begin our adventure, make sure you're settled. If you are seated, get comfortable. Listen to your spine and relax your shoulders. If you are lying down, get your covers and pillow where you want them. Create your nest. Very good. Now, take three deep breaths with me in preparation for the journey ahead. Let go of your day and travel to a vacation for your mind. Imagine with me. See, smell, and be present. Breathe with me now. In through your nose, out through your mouth, slow and even. One. Two. Three. Very good. Now, shut your eyes and let's drift off to the site of tonight's adventure. You have always wanted to be a pirate. Something called to your heart about the salt scent of the sea, the constant glow of the sun, the landing on distant exotic islands. You've always wanted to row ashore, then splash out of your boat knee-deep in the warm salt water. You've wanted to collapse, wet and wearing striped socks, onto yellow sand that smells like rum and danger. So naturally, you became a pirate. And here you are. You have the deeply important job of lookout. As your crew sails through the Caribbean, you are seeking an island where you can gather fresh water into the barrels in your ship's hold. There are rumours that you are also there to bury the treasure that your captain has amassed inside his cabin, but those are only rumours. It is your job to catch sight of land in all this shimmering blue. You mutter the words, feel them out on your tongue. Land ho, land ho. You laugh. It will be an exciting moment when you spot the island. The entire ship will race into action, all from the power of your words. You think to yourself, as you grip the spyglass in your sweaty hands, I'd better not get this wrong. You know you won't, however. You have a good eye. You're not going to call it until you're sure. A shimmer on the horizon isn't enough. A black blur isn't a definite sign. Not until the light stops thrashing against it, and you know for sure it's not a mirage. It's real. It's land. That's when you'll call it. You can't wait to step ashore and hear tropical birds shrieking in a strange jungle. It's so quiet, this moment. You feel confronted by your own humanity. This ship felt huge when you first stared at it in the docks, its enormous canvas sails crackling in the wind. Now, in the ocean, you are so aware of its smallness. The ocean around you is endless. You have seen nothing but high grey waves for days. You do not, however, see anything on the horizon yet, so you shut your eyes and feel the heat of the sun beat against your eyelids. It is a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day to be a pirate. There is something so reassuring about having adventure all around you at all times, and you find yourself profoundly grateful for this chance to sway in the wind in the top of a tiny wooden box. The ship itself is lost in such a vast, teeming ocean, and you, in a way, are lost in the sea of this ship, perched at the very top. You are the highest point for hundreds of miles. You are the closest thing to the sun. Instead of standing, the way you're supposed to, you decide to sit down. You tuck your knees in, and you hug them. You take an admiring breath of the salt air. There's something sort of thrilling about sitting down here where no one can see you. You pretend you are a bird, having sneaked onto the ship by accident. You listen to the crew below you clatter and sing, trailing ropes between their fingers. 
humming mysterious sea shanties, and dreaming of a home they have chosen to leave. The crow's nest sways in the wind, rumbling this way and shivering that way. You are as much a part of the sky, you think, as human beings might ever be. You may as well be a bird. You part your eyes and stare up at the bright, blinding blue, and for a moment there is nothing except for you and sky. Your blouse is heavy with the damp of the day, but even that is not unpleasant. Your blouse is a familiar thing. The smell of it, which is like salt and cotton and the stickiness of the ship, is a good smell. It's like the smell of a dog. Not good, per se, but at the same time deeply comforting. A smell that fills you with love and a feeling of safety. Perhaps that love and trust is for yourself. You yawn and wipe the sweat off your forehead. Enough of this lazing about, you tell yourself. It's time to spot some land. Still, you don't stand up, yet. You kneel in the crow's nest, comfortable, and you rest your arms on the rim. The warmth throbs into your arms, pleasantly. With the spyglass to your eye, you let the weight of your body rest against the rough wooden sides of the crow's nest. Even now, you're amazed at how high you are. As the ship dips on a wave, your stomach lurches. You are a few feet from tipping head first into the sea. Not that that would be a bad thing. You could swim. The smack on impact might be a bit unpleasant, but your crew would soon see you to safety. Your crew cares about you. Legitimately. They're like family. Intense. Get on your nerves. But any of those pirates down there would take a bullet for you, and you know it. They'd also fish you out of the sea. You stare down at the water for a moment, fantasizing about diving headfirst into that blue glitter. It will be icy cold, you know it, and given how sticky you are, a purge of shudderingly cold water doesn't sound half bad. Then you shake your head and smile. Swimming can happen at the beach, when you find land with fresh running water for barrels in the hold. You're going to pour buckets of drinking water over your head, delighted to feel cold rivulets of pure water, water that doesn't sting with salt. You're eager. You can't wait. You lift your spyglass to the horizon and... There. There it is. Unmistakable, with a glaze of heat, a blur of green and the outline of a dense jungle. You found it. Delight awaits. You cup your hand to your mouth and cry, Land ho!